Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House up in Maine, taking a look at some of the firearms that they're going to be selling in their upcoming Spring of 2018 Firearms Auction. And today we're taking a look at a bit of an oddball BAR. Uh, this is a fully transferable, fully automatic BAR, but it doesn't conform to any standard military configuration. And the reason for that is that this was a gun that was built up from various parts by a previous owner specifically to be the best shooting BAR he could come up with. And this kind of harkens back to like the Colt Monitor, uh, which was adopted by the FBI as a quote-unquote fighting rifle. Uh, the idea of the BAR as a weapon that could be fired on the move from the shoulder. That's how the gun was sort of originally intended, um, but it's always been a really heavy gun to do that with. And of course, 30 out 6 in full auto is a, a pretty hefty cartridge to do that with. And so the owner of this gun, the guy who built it, decided that he could probably do better, and without having to spend the money on something like an original Colt Monitor, which are quite rare and extremely expensive. So he put this together from parts. Let's take a closer look, and I'll show you all the various modifications that went into this gun. So we'll start with the barrel. This is a 21-inch long barrel, including the World War I style muzzle device. There are probably better muzzle devices to put on there, I'm not sure exactly why that one was chosen, but uh, at 21 inches and a somewhat light profile, this definitely helps reduce the overall weight and heft of the gun. And perhaps more substantially, this is actually chambered for 7mm Mauser. And there are a couple reasons for that choice. Uh, I think probably the primary one was when this gun was put together, 7mm Mauser ammunition was really cheap on the surplus market. And so the guy could afford to buy a whole mess of it uh, to shoot through the gun, which is, of course, the point of this gun. Lots of shooting and lots of fun. Now, in addition to that, 7mm Mauser should be a much nicer cartridge to shoot through something like this than 30 6 It's a, a lighter bullet and definitely a lower recoiling cartridge, and I bet that thing runs really nicely. In addition, because of its overall length and just general uh, profile, 7mm Mauser runs just fine out of standard 20-round BAR magazines. So there was no uh, modification necessary to the receiver or to the magazine to do that caliber conversion. Surplus ammunition varies in power, of course, and so in order to compensate for that, this has a, an easily finger-adjustable uh, gas regulator on it. That was a, a specific choice for this rifle. And you probably notice this thing. There's one up here at the forend, and there is also another one mounted, welded on to the, uh, the rear sling swivel here. Those are tripod adapters, I believe, for a Bren gun tripod. So if you wanted to shoot this easily from a tripod, you could just clamp it right in. As far as shootability goes, probably the best improvement made to the BAR, both this one and, well, all of them in general, is the pistol grip. Uh, this is actually not an original BAR pistol grip. Uh, it's in the same basic pattern, but the ones that were actually developed by, well, for example, Colt, were actually quite a bit shorter. Uh, they're kind of a little stubby grip. They, don't, they, they work, but they're a little short to give you a, a real purchase on the grip. And so this guy actually fabricated his own. You can see the center plate that the grip panels are screwed to is welded onto the trigger group down here, and also back here. And that grip gives you a really good purchase on the gun. That really helps to uh, helps in handling and helps in controllability. The sights on here are the 1917 Enfield style of sights, the World War I BAR style of sights, with a nice big aperture. I don't think you'd ever really need the, uh, the long-range version, but you've got a nice big aperture and a hooded nice square post for a front sight. Um, pretty good readable sights. It's a little bit hard to read under the black enamel paint on the receiver, but this uh, fire selector group is a safe, automatic, and fire three-position group, and it has the little safety detent right here that pops out when you put the gun into the fire position, so that you can't accidentally flip it back onto safe. That was something that uh, Colt added to some of, well, to the Colt monitor, for example. Uh, in automatic, of course, it is full auto and flipped forward to F, uh, that is the semi-auto position. So uh, that is a better, pretty much by, by everyone's assessment, that is a better setup than the slow and full full-auto settings that the US chose to have on the, uh, the 1918A2 BARs. 
The handguard up front, however, is the A2, the 1918 A2 pattern, because, and again this is a good choice, it, they, they dramatically increased the size of this handguard to help uh, protect the shooter from the heat of the gas tube and the barrel. And for a gun like this, that is designed to have a lot of ammo put through it, the biggest, beefiest handguard you can get is the one you'd want. So that's a, a good choice. And that mark right there is definitely the sign that someone had a lot of fun with this thing. That, uh, that mark is caused by brass ejecting out and bouncing off the receiver right there. Despite this not being a collectible gun, because, well, it, it's a completely bastardized version of the BAR, I found this thing really intriguing, which is why I decided to do a video on it. Um, having shot a, a couple of different types of BAR from the shoulder, I bet this one actually works really quite well. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do any shooting with it myself, but as you can see from things like the brass marks behind the receiver, it clearly runs just fine. And in 7 Mauser, I bet it runs really quite nicely. So I think this it will be a really cool gun for someone who is looking for not a BAR to stick on the wall, but a BAR to actually go out and shoot. It would be awesome to see someone shoot competitively with something like this, or just the idea of having a full-auto 7mm Mauser behemoth of a BAR. Uh, pretty cool gun. Now, if you think that that person might be you, if you'd like to have this one yourself, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to the Julia catalog page on this gun, with their pictures and their description, and everything else you need to know about uh, placing a bid on it and making it yours. Of course, it is a fully transferable machine gun, so it is uh, subject to the, the restrictions of the NFA, background checks, etc. Thanks for watching.